This Asus Store NAS takes six M.2 SSDs. It has two two and a half gig ethernet ports and a low power Intel processor. I wanted to hate this system so much, but within a couple days of using it, I actually ended up doubling down and getting a much bigger version with 12 drives. Because even though I find these things to be positively maddening, I can definitely see a reason why we're gonna use this one. But hold on, let's back up. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and these are the Asus Store Flash Store FS67 series. This over here is the Flash Store FS 6706T, which means it has six NVMe SSDs, M.2 NVMe SSDs in it, and it also has two two and a half gig ethernet ports. Now, a lot of folks, when we did a short on this, said, hey, I wish it had 10 gigabit ethernet, and that is solved over here with the 10 gigabit or 10 G base T, and also 12 M.2 NVMe SSD Flash Store 12 Pro also called the FS6712X. For years, I've wanted an M.2 NAS, but we've never been able to get one because, well, frankly, the pre-built NASes, uh, you know, really haven't focused on M.2. But while you could have made your own M.2 NAS, one of the biggest challenges was just, frankly, the M.2 SSD pricing. That has changed recently as the crucial P3 Plus and P3 SSDs have come down in price to, uh, like, they're basically just trying to get these things out the door. Just to give you an idea, this six M.2 system, we have the Crucial P3 Plus one terabyte drives, and they were like a little over $50 each. This system has 12 four terabyte Crucial P3 Plus drives, and those I think were about $220 when we bought them on Amazon. Now, if you read Will's main site P3 Plus one terabyte review, you might see that these Crucial SSDs are not very good. I probably wouldn't buy them. However, for a system like this, I think they actually match the system pretty darn well. Through the process of testing these systems, uh, I have to say it's been a love-hate relationship. These do some things very, very well. They do some things that you would expect them to do or want them to do uh, very poorly. And we're gonna go over all of that in this video. So first we're gonna go through the hardware. We're gonna talk about both systems. And then we're gonna talk about the performance. We're gonna get into power consumption and noise. And then in our key lessons learned, we're gonna talk about things like upgrading these or trying to upgrade them with like things like new RAM, more NICs, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it was definitely a journey Need to get to this point. If you want to help support our independent reviews, you can always become an STH YouTube member by joining down below. With that, let's get to the hardware. All right, so the first thing on the hardware is like, let's look at the front of this. There is one feature on either of these NASs on the front, and that is that you get a USB 3 port. That's it. On one side of the NAS, you get vents. On the other side of the NAS, you get a power button, and this whole thing glows red when you turn it on. On the top of the system, you get ASUS Store, and you get four status LEDs. Now, looking at the bottom of the system, you know, you get all your like kind of normal serial number stuff and all that kind of stickers. You get these nice rubber feet, even though there's no like spinning drives in here. So that's, uh, you know, appreciated, but it's probably not necessary to have these huge ones. But the one thing that they do is they give you extra room under the unit to have a fan. And that's right here. To get inside the system uh, using this panel, you have four screws, which I think is too many. You can see it says uh, open and close here and the fan just slides out. Now you might be asking, how do you get a fan to slide out? Well, that's part of the fun engineering of this platform. So you have the little fan here and then you see the PWM four pin uh, right here. And then that goes into a little board, which is has a USB type A connector. And then you'll kind of see this in here, like right here, there's a little USB. And that little USB is what gives you hot swap fan using USB, which is just, uh, it's just crazy, right? Okay, so looking at the back of the systems, that's, uh, that's probably what a lot of folks wanna see and where these things start to get really different. Now what these systems have in common is that they have optical audio output. They also have an HDMI port. They have three USB ports, two of them are USB 2 and one is a USB 3 port. They also have their 12 volt DC in and a little reset button. But the big difference is of course networking because on the six M.2 SSD NAS, you only get two two and a half gig ethernet ports. But on the 12 bay NAS, you get a full 10 G base T port. Now we know a lot of folks are gonna initially say, hey, you have six M.2 SSDs, you have 12 M.2 SSDs, and you only have two, two and a half, or you have one 10. I mean, that's not enough. Uh, we're gonna hold that for the performance and the key lessons learned. For now, that's what these have. With that, let's get inside and see what makes these things work. 
Okay, so getting inside one of these systems, let's just kind of show you this real quick. So this system, you know, you have your four screws, you take them off, you do the USB fan over here, and then you're inside, and you can see that we have this one pre-populated. On this side, we have a total of six crucial P3 plus four terabyte SSDs. One thing that I really like about this is the fact that instead of making these uh, like, you know, all you have to like screw them in or something like that, the Asus Store folks I do have a toolless mounting option, which I love. I love the fact that they did that in this because, you know, even though we still have four screws to be able to undo this case, which I don't know why we have that, we still have the ability to add drives very easily. And no matter if you get the 12 M.2 or six M.2 system, well, either one, this is where you go and put the first six drives. So at this point, you might be wondering, well, if that's the access panel, how do I get to the other six drives in the 12 bay unit? And that uh, was only two screws. And with those two screws, you can take off the entire top of the system. So just taking a quick look at the six SSD one, something that you're gonna notice is that we don't have the M.2 slots populated on the side. And while we have the AS Media, I think they're ASM uh, 1480 PCIe multiplexers, we, we, don't, we have those populated on here. What we don't have is any PCIe switches. You also see that we have a four gigabyte DDR4 SODIM and a second slot that's available. Personally, I, th I think that four is a little bit light for a system like this. This, this retails for about $450. And I just kind of think that these days, you know, a eight gig DIM, you can get them on Amazon for like 17, 18 bucks. I just kind of feel like, you know, an eight gig, you know, you can't add more than $18 for something like this. Now in the 12 SSD version, we did upgrade this to, you can see two eight gig DIMMs for 16 gigs total. We, we tried some other things that we're gonna talk about, but I, I do think that this is a, a good idea and I would certainly recommend it, especially if you got the 12 SSD system. The other thing that you'll notice on like these two lines of components right here is that you just have pads here while you have the PCIe switches here. These are AS Media PCIe switches. And the reason that this system needs PCIe switches is just, it ran out of PCIe lanes because these systems use the Intel N5105, but that processor only has a total of eight PCIe lanes. So while the processor is decently fast, especially for a NAS, when you look at it from the other perspective and you just kind of look at like, you know, how much PCIe connectivity, you have PCIe Gen 3 and you only have eight lanes to work with. So on a platform like this, you can have a PCIe lane go to each of the two and a half gig ethernet ports and then have one lane each to all of the SSDs. And, and that's your eight ports right there. You, you don't have any new connectivity. And while that's all well and good on the 10 gigabit one, well, well, it's even worse, right? Because now you need at least two or four lanes for the 10 G based T NIC. And then you also would need a total of at least 12 lanes to give each drive at least one lane. And so, you know, you're talking about, you need at least 14 to 16 lanes minimum. But if you were going for full bandwidth, you would need 48 lanes just for the NVMe SSDs. And then you'd need at least four or two or four for the 10 G based TNIC. And you still would have a massive imbalance between your performance of your SSDs and your networking. And if that sounds silly to you, I totally get it because I empathize with that. That's exactly what I thought. And that's why originally I went out and purchased the six SSD version instead of the 12. And I know we've probably already gotten some rage comments saying like, why would you have so many M.2 SSDs and then so, so little networking or whatever. I totally get it guys. Like I understand I had that same thought, but I think that the other way to think about it is think about it from the network side. And that is like, this is a two and a half gig, dual two and a half gig ethernet NAS. This is a 10 gigabit ethernet NAS. And then the M.2 SSDs, they're just there for storage. They're really there for capacity. And once you start thinking about it like that, it makes a lot more sense what ASUS Store is doing here. But with that, let's get to the performance. Okay, so let's talk about the performance and I wanna just kind of start, we'll start with the CPU because that's the easy one and it's common to both of these. So with the CPU, we have the Intel N5105. That's a quad core processor. It's not particularly fast, but it's it's actually not too bad. And so we ran a couple of Dockerized benchmarks on these systems and we saw the performance is pretty much equivalent to what we would see on the fanless firewall versions of the N5105. So we, we got performance that we would just normally expect. Okay, so to test the network storage performance, 
performance because I think that's really what you're doing on the NAS in most cases. What I want to do is that uh, we're going to use this QNAP switch over here. That's the way you can tell that this is not a sponsored one because it's not an Asus store switch, but we have two 10 gig ports and we also have four two and a half gig ports on this one. By the time you see this, we should have the STH main site review of this switch up and it will go into our overall archive in the ultimate roundup that we have on the STH main site. And for the clients of this, we're going to use two. We're going to use this B-Link EQ12 Pro, which has the N305 processor. So it's an eight core Atom or E core processor, kind of like the next generation of what's in this. And then we're also going to use this HP Elite Mini 600 G9, where we put a 10 gigabit ethernet NIC in. And well, those are the clients. We're gonna set these up kind of similarly because on this, we're gonna use a RAID 5 array with our one terabyte SSDs. And on this one, we're gonna use a RAID 5 with all of the four terabyte SSDs. Now we didn't necessarily get crazy performance by any means, but on the other hand, it was fast and it was, it was pretty decent. On the six system, you need to do one thing before you even start this, right? There's a little checkbox that says enable SMB multi-channel. The difference between enabling and not enabling that is like doubling the performance of a client accessing this. Because because you don't have to do things like set up LACP or any of those kind of features. You can literally just take the two ports here, plug them into a unmanaged switch, and you'll be able to get about double the performance. We did that same file copy and we got over 500 megabytes of transfer. And that is pretty darn good, frankly. So a lot of folks say this is only two and a half gig NAS. Even if you're just going to a client that has a 10 gig NIC, you're still getting more than two and a half gig. You're getting closer to like five gigabits per second, but you do have to click that checkbox. Now, if you're sitting there and you're thinking like, oh, I need the maximum VM random read, random write IOPS performance, like 4K IOPS performance, these are the wrong NASes for that, guys. They are not for performance. You're using M.2 SSDs for capacity and also not having any moving parts. With that, let's go see something cool, which is the power consumption and noise. Okay, so let's talk about power consumption. And I already have one of these units set up and I, let's, let's kind of go through some of this real quick. So the first unit that we have is the six M.2 SSD unit. And then we have the 10 gig 12 SSD unit on the bottom. Now I've already set up this six bay one with two, two and a half gig ethernet links to our QNAP one over here, our QNAP switch. And then the other thing I just want to point out is that this unit has crucial P3 plus one terabyte SSDs. Now these are not great SSDs by any means, but I feel like it's a pretty good low-end configuration for a system like this. And frankly, like the larger SSDs don't really take that that much power more than a one terabyte drive. So I just kind of figured, you know, let's use this as a baseline. One big difference between these is actually just their power supply. So you're gonna see that these power supplies are a little bit different. They're both from Delta. This is a 65 watt power supply for the six M.2 SSD one. And then we have a 90 watt power supply for the 12. And when it's running like this in its normal operation mode, this one is only at about 34 and a half DBA. So only about a half DBA higher than our just noise floor in the studio with all the lights and stuff. And if you have it like on the other side of your office or something like that, you're just never going to hear it. Now, in terms of power consumption, you can see here that we're just in about maybe 13 and a half to 14 watts at idle with two two and a half gig ethernet links, you know, ready to go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use SMB3 multi-channel and we're going to use both of these links to go to this over here, which is the HP Elite Mini uh, 600G9 that we reviewed. You can see that as part of our Tiny Mini Micro series. It's awesome. And that has a 10 gig NIC in. And what you're going to see is uh, just the power consumption doing that transfer. And we have the crucial P3 Plus SSD set up as RAID 5. Okay, so it's now in the middle of the copy right now and power consumption has definitely gone up a pretty significant amount. I mean, we're at 22 or so watts. There's probably a bit more that this could go beyond that, but I think that that's a very reasonable range. And the fan, I can tell you, is not spinning up at all just doing this. Okay, now the 10 gig one is booting. And so we have plugged in our 90 watt power brick to our power meter. And you're gonna see a couple things. Like first off, you know, we're already in that 23 to 30 something watt range. Uh, so that's one. And then the second one that I think is really interesting is that this is actually picking up about 36 dBA. Whoa, that beep was, uh, that, that means that the system is now booted and ready to go. 
Okay, so now we're at idle with 12 four terabyte crucial P3 plus SSDs. And, uh, and you know, we also have the 10 gig link you can see is active and it's linked up to our QNAP switch. This unit is also about the same where we're getting about half a DBA over the noise floor, maybe about one DBA. So it might be a slightly louder, but it's really pretty darn close. And then on the power consumption side, you're gonna see that we're a little bit higher as well. We're now in the like 25-ish watt range. So it's definitely a lot higher than what we saw with the six bay unit. I mean, it's like twice the idle power consumption, but maybe that makes sense because we have twice the number of drives, twice the amount of networking. Okay, we've now started a transfer and what you'll see is that we are at about, mm, about 800 megabytes a second or so. And we're in that maybe about 43 to maybe 50 ish watt range, which is a lot more actually. So I guess that's something that we probably should have expected that if you have twice the number of SSDs plus twice the you know networking bandwidth that maybe your power consumption is about two X. I, I wouldn't have guessed that that exactly just because I think that you have the CPU always that's the same plus you have like RAM. And so those two things you would think would be the same plus you have PCIe switches in here. So maybe, maybe it works, I guess. Anyway, let's get to key lessons learned. Okay, with all of these reviews, I love to have key lessons learned. And there were a lot of things learned. I've already kind of talked about a couple of them, like using SMB3 multi-channel and like enabling support on this one. That's a good lesson learned. But I want to talk about the journey of, uh, of just playing with these things, right? Because these are not just, you know, getting bought and put into, you know, service right away. We're, we're playing with these and seeing like, what can we do with them? So first thing I want to talk about is the RAM upgrade. These systems come with only four gigabytes of memory. Even on the six drive model, I think that four is just a little bit too little. So we did upgrade these and just the ones that we used are uh, the Crucial. I don't know why we use all Crucial. I have no idea. Uh, they're not sponsoring this video. Maybe they should have Crucial. If you do want to, let me know. But this is a 16 gigabyte kit. And in the 16 gigabyte kit, we get two eight gigabyte SODIMs and these worked fine in both systems. We'll leave a link to these in the description. But we actually had to go order those eight gig DIMMs because we just don't use eight gig DIMMs anymore. We don't even use 16. We only use 32. And we put them in our tiny mini micro nodes and a lot of the mini PCs, all that kind of stuff. And so uh, we, we just didn't have them around. What we did have around, however, was we did have two 32 gig DIMMs. And we said, hey, well, why don't we just go put two 32 gig DIMMs in there and see if it works. And it booted up fine. And then while we were doing our footage, just file test, uh, it crashed. And we had it crash on both the six drive unit as well as the 12 drive unit. We tried three different brands of SO DIMMs and we got the same thing where all of them, all the 32 gig or dual 32 gig configuration all of them crashed. I would not recommend that to anyone. Just stop at like 16 gigs. That has been working fine for us. But that's also why I wish that these came with an eight gig SODIM because that way you could just for 17, 18 bucks, double the RAM capacity, have 16 gigabytes of RAM and go do some fun things in here. Asus Store does have a pretty nice web UI on here and you can do things like add uh, not just apps from their app store, but you can also do things like have Docker containers and go run things there. Okay, and for our final key lesson learned, let's talk about about the pricing and the journey of how we started out with a six terabyte NAS and ended up with a 48 terabyte one. So the first one, I, I purchased this because I thought like it would be cool to have an M.2 NAS where like you're using much more reliable media than hard drives and uh, you know, it's, it hopefully is low power. And so the idea with this was, you know, we got the, the this unit, which was $449. And then with the P3 pluses being about 50 bucks each, that was about $300 of drives for about $750 total. So then I realized what the biggest limitation of this one to me was, was I just wanted more SSD capacity, right? And using one terabyte SSDs was cheap, but it wasn't necessarily efficient because it was $125 per terabyte to connect it to two, two and a half gig ethernet NICs. So that is why we ended up getting this one, which had 12 drives at about 200, say $225 pop. So it's about $2,700. The 10 gig ethernet NAS is more expensive. It was about $750. And that brings the total cost of this system at about $3,450, excluding the extra $35 memory cost. But because we're using much larger drives, not only do we double our network performance by having that 10 gig NIC versus two two and a halfs, but we also managed to lower our cost per terabyte because now this thing is only at about $71, $72 per terabyte to put it on the network. And not only that, because these things use such little power, we can battery power these things if we go and travel and need a NAS. So overall, do I think these things are great? Absolutely not. 
One thing I do wish though, is that these things were a little bit smaller. Having these angles may look cool, but if we did use it for like a travel studio or editing or something like that, it would be handy if it was smaller to put it into a Pelican case, especially since M.2 SSDs will probably fare a lot better in travel than hard drives. Hey guys, I hope you like this look at these crazy Asus store flash door units. They are definitely, uh, definitely interesting. I think a lot of folks are gonna have the same reaction that I had and say like, hey, I would have architected these things differently or I wanna see them architected differently. I totally get it. But on the other hand, if you just look at it like, hey, what do you need to go fill a 10 gig link or a two and a half gig link and then how much capacity do you want? I think these things actually make more sense than when I first saw the spec sheet. And guys, I hope you liked this video. If you did like this video, why don't you check out some of our other videos and you can always give this video a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, have an awesome day.